Oh, good. Thanks. Thanks for stopping by today. Appreciate it. And uh, uh, always good to talk with you and, and to uh, uh, talk about uh, today's short strangles and risk management. Good to, uh, are you, you traveling much these days? You went skiing, didn't you? Oh man, Dan, I went skiing last weekend. First time in 20 years. It was great. Oh my goodness. 20 years. Is it now? Were you a big ski before the yes. 20 years? Did you? So you're, you're, this is old hat for you skiing. It was old hat, but I was worried it wasn't going to come back. I was worried my legs weren't going to work. I was worried about all this crap and it actually all worked out. Oh, took, good. Good. Took Me both my kids and, and their significant others. And we went to park city. It was awesome. That's good. Good. I'm glad you, you got away. Are you now are you back doing the live seminars with? Hastings? Yeah, I hit the road. I'm actually starting um, next weekend and I'm on the road for 25 of the next like 40 weeks of the year. Um, well, you're like a you're like a rock group, Tom. You're like, a, you're like <laughs> no, I really like doing it though. It keeps me alive, and it like sure. I I enjoy it. It's fun. So, and I only do shows on usually on Saturdays. So, um, you know, I take off Friday night, come home Saturday night. I'm only gone for like a day, and it keeps me like engaged with our customers. It keeps oh, yeah. me changing up content. You know, like it's important to me. So, um, yeah, we're going all around the world this year, and doing you know like i said like almost 25 shows so it'll be great wow now what where are you uh where are you in the u.s next next show we have in the u.s is in houston i'm i'm actually doing a show in orlando next next weekend and then houston the following weekend but houston's the first tasty show and then in and that's in march and then april is uh new york city okay okay and if people want to get tickets to that they just go on the website um everything's on tastylive.com forward slash events everything okay. so if anybody's um, all interested. all the live events that we're doing tastylive.com forward slash events you just sign up on eventbrite everything's free and you can come out to any season we're going to be in 11 different cities listed on the tasty site wow okay well great well, so maybe a little bit tom on how you look at the world of strangles and how do you manage them? And maybe even just for people, because obviously by doing it small, you know, it, it makes sense. But why strangles versus maybe, you know, a wide iron condor or something? And, and sure. what's the thinking? Well, first of all, from from a simplicity standpoint. Um, right, right. Actually, let me do something. Let me find it underlying that. Um, let me think of something here that we don't have any positions in so I could just create something. Um, that might be tough, Tom. How many positions do you, you probably get? Right now, about a hundred different underlying. So I got to oh find goodness. something where I don't have anything on it. I just, let me look at some of these stocks. Um, I will find something here that I have no position on. Like here's a stock, shop. I don't think I currently have a shop position. Let's see. S H O P. Okay, yeah. So I have no shop position. What so is shop anyway? What is shop? Shopify? Oh, Shopify. Shopify. I got you. Okay. Yeah. So Shopify is a is a Canadian um um well, it's it's think of it like a e-commerce site. Okay. You know, okay. almost like an Etsy, but a little bit different, but but yeah. um interesting company it's been trading here, here here's a graph of it for anybody that hasn't that's not familiar with it so it's on yeah. high end of the range but you know it yeah. chops around it trades you know four or five million shares a day that kind of thing okay. it's um uh i don't is know it pretty don't, liquid I, is it pretty liquid option wise uh it it used to be i'm going to check it out right now um we'll go to april options just for the hell of it okay and uh the volume's okay not bad it's not horrible not bad but it's got a nice yeah. volatility 44 it's got oh, yeah. a decent expected move you know seven dollars um market just sold off actually a lot s and p's are actually down nine now wow. nasdaq's down 10 after being up almost 100 pretty nice little turnaround here yeah. but um i think what's I, I i guess what i what i want to get back to your question so i have no position here right now so let's yeah. that, that that's the reason i picked this okay and it's got some decent volume the markets are reasonably tight you know couple yeah. pennies apart so that's that's decent yeah. i haven't traded in a while so i don't really know you know where it's trading off mid price and things like that sure. but your first question is you know so why a strangle and why a strangle 
compared to like a wide iron condor. Now, a wide iron condor, by definition, is a synthetic strangle, right? right I mean, right, it's just right. it's just a, a cost effective strangle. But let, let's let's right. take a look. So right now, I'd probably be doing April, um, okay. and the first thing that I think it's important to know what the expected move is in April. And you can see it up here. We show the expected move on Tasty. It's $7 and let's call it $7.50. Stock's currently trading at $75. Now this stock unfortunately only has $5 wide strikes. Yeah. So the seven and a half dollar move and the stock currently trading at 75, I would probably go $10 outside just as a starting point gotcha. for strangle. So $10 outside on the call side is 85 strike and $10 outside on the put strike on the put side is 65, right? That's $10 yeah. a side. There's nothing crazy there at all. That would be a normal strangle. And yeah. now the reason the reason that I call it normal is because I set it up right outside of the expected move. Sure. So it's a very high probability of success. Right. In fact, right. you, you can see down here, we have probability of profit right here yeah. of just over 70%. We show it all on the platform. It's pretty simple. Yeah. And the probability of making 50% of max profit, which is 50% of 279, or let's call it a buck 40, is you know almost 83%. Right. right. So here, I'll just do this. I'll put it really small in just so we can. So the mid price is 279. Just to test how yeah. these, how, how, how this stock trades, yeah. you know, I'll put it at 278 and see if we get filled. See, Phil. Okay. So, and this is all live. So we, and there's my fill right now. So we got filled a penny off of mid price. So now and you got a feel of what's, how it's kind of acting. Yeah. I got a feel. It's, it's like, it's like, it's like doing a little price discovery, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. But now I'm going to go back to Shopify. I'm going to create a similar order on the platform, make it real simple, put this back in here, same exact order, but now let's do a wide iron condor to make it more capital efficient. I got you. Uh, yeah. Now this count, it's you can't really tell by buying power because this is portfolio margin, so it's it's a little bit different. Yeah. But you have to figure it's just under twenty percent of seventy five dollars. So it's that strangle itself was about probably let's call it fifteen. Let's call it fifteen hundred bucks. So that's strangle. a good guideline for PM would be twenty percent. No, no, not for PM. For PM, it's a lot less. It's only six twenty five. I got but you. for so, non PM, it would be about fifteen hundred. But for PM, it's less. It's six twenty five. It's a third. Okay. So if you were going to do an iron condor and make it a little wider, let's say you buy this strike, the ninety fives. Let's say you buy the fifty fives. Right. Now, in this case, you know you're reducing the fifteen hundred um, down to let's call it eight hundred. Ten dollars yeah. minus the two dollars you collect, a little lesser, seven hundred and ninety dollars. So it's basically exactly half by making it a wide iron condor. Yeah. So the first, the reason why you trade a wide iron condor is you're going to give up only a couple of percentage points of pop, and you're only going to give up a couple of percentage points in P fifty, but you're going to save yourself about fifty percent of the capital required to make the trade. Right. I'm going to move this. Let's just see. Does this seem? Hang on. I have this this crazy little. Um, thing here from the zoom call let me just move this to somewhere yeah. else on the platform right up here okay and um and then mid price let's call it 211 so in these cases it's probably going to fill around 209 or something but i'll put it in a 210 just to give it a shot yeah and then here's the resting order here now I the nice you. thing about tasty is you just right click on the order hit replace order and you can move it down by a penny or two pennies whatever it is That's i nice. just really want to fill this order so i'm just going to go quickly and because I don't really trade Shopify enough to know. So it okay. took moving two cents off mid price. Okay. So it filled. So now I did the the strangle and the iron condor, and they're both co-mingled together here in my position. Yeah. And you can see, you know, on Tasty, the position, if you're a technician, you want to see kind of a quick chart up here, you can look at it. That's, That's the nice. daily. But you can see all that stuff up here. And here's your position. And if I wanted to see my fills in Shopify, they're right here. Okay. And that's the nice thing about this platform is you have your a small chart if you want it. You have your actual position right here. You have all your fills right here. And you still have this page here. And you can take a look and see what you, you know, if you want to do something else. And you can watch what the market's doing over here. Okay. But in this case, I have a strangle and I have an iron condor. Yeah. A one lot strangle, a one lot iron condor. There's the total position. And yeah. um, I, I don't know. That's just the starting point to answer your question of why sure. would you do an iron why would you do a strangle over an iron condor is because you have a couple of percentage points higher probability of profit and it's easier to adjust the strangle i mean okay. let's say that sure. this position right. starts to move a little bit 
um, let's say, let's go back to the original position. Yeah. And let's say that, that mm -hmm. I'm sorry, 85, 65. And let's say on this position, all of a sudden we wanted to say, you know what, the stock's moving up a little bit. And so you want to adjust your position to protect it. So if, you're, if your short call is being challenged, all you do in the put side is just roll your put up a little bit. You buy okay. back the one that you're short and you sell, you just basically roll up a put spread. It's the simplest way to trade. And this platform makes it super simple to roll up or down verticals. And that's what we like about it. Tom, would that be your first, in the example that you brought up, like if Shopify is going a little bit up more, would you roll up the tested side or the untested? Always roll up the untested side. Okay. We never touch the tested side. Okay, never touch. Okay, so you yeah, would roll I, up oh, never touch the tested side. Always roll up the untested side. Now, it's would you clean. roll it if it kept going up? Would you? Would you? At what point would you? Okay, you you just keep rolling it until it gets like. You know, you're in an iron butterfly or something, or what yeah, we'd do? keep rolling till we get to an iron fly. If we had a if we had a condor on, if I we had you. a strangle on, we'd keep going till we got to a straddle. We might even go inverted, straddle. and then and then we do something which is really interesting. Let me show you this for a second. Yeah. So, so let's say um, let's say in this position we started originally short the sixty five eighty five, and let's just say you know what the market starts to go higher, so we roll up the puts. Then the market starts to go a little lower. Oops, I'm sorry. We started here originally. The market starts to go a little lower, so we roll down the calls. Now we have the 70.80. Stock's still trading at 75. Now the market starts to go a little bit higher, so we roll up the puts one more time. Now we roll down the calls one more time if the market turns around, so it's choppy. Okay, we're just trading all verticals in there, all a penny off bid price. Mm -hmm. Now we end up with the short straddle in the middle. Okay. Right, now the right. question is, if the market starts to move up, do you invert this, which you easily could, and you can go inverted by moving the puts above the calls. Yeah. Or what I like to do is, is I'm going to delete this for one second. What I like to do is to buy back the the straddle and then resell. The oh, reset it. Yeah. So so I buy the guts and resell the wings. Hmm. I just okay. call this. This is recentering. Buy the guts, sell the wings, start all over again. When you get in that that when you get in that straddle. position. Okay. You know, years ago, Dan, you couldn't do that because it was too expensive and the markets were too wide. But right. now that the markets are essentially a penny wide. That's right. There's, you know, I mean, there's no give up and there's you know, the commissions are basically nothing. So you buy the guts, which is the short straddle. You sell out the wings and you just take a lot of the risk off and you put yourself back in the original position. And reload. OK. And you only do that when you get in the straddle position. That's right. OK. Well, you can do it anytime, but that's the primary time. Okay. So really you just you're just trying to buy some time to get your money on your adjustments. Do you yeah. have like any set time or like do you have any guidelines when okay, let's say you start in the strangle, the original strangle. We like to roll we, we like to do something by twenty with twenty when we get to around twenty one days to go. So twenty one DTE. But the reality is that that I find it I find it much easier to trade and much more effective when you roll positions around the 21 DTE as mm. opposed to waiting any longer. But you know, sometimes we'll trade, you know, sometimes we'll trade the 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 dailies. Yeah. Um I mean I didn't trade any dailies today or any zeros today, but I mean you certainly could. Like if we went, for example, um let me just move this thing again. And I don't know. Are you trading zeros at all? Have you gotten into yeah, that? Yeah, I've, I've done. I'm kind of like kicking and screaming. I'm like doing some, and you know, it's kind of a love hate relationship. What's your hey? Before we look at the zero date, let me have one more question on shop. So, as as the stock is, let's say you put these on at what forty two days the short strangle time with that. Yeah, well, I did at fifty today, but yeah, for okay. let's say forty five normally. Yeah, so forty five days Shopify starts going up. Are you waiting regardless of the move up, waiting till that 21 day to adjust the the uh, adjust it or no 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 I'm I'm an aggressive adjuster. I adjust okay. as soon as I get uncomfortable with my deltas. Okay. <laughs> I agree. I agree. I don't know if I could wait till 21. No, no, no. I don't wait. I don't wait. Okay. I I'd adjust I'd adjust 15 minutes after I do the trade if I have to. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. All right. Um yeah. on zero day, what's your 
Yeah, well, it's the same kind of logic on the zero day, except you have to, you know, you have to respect the expected move. So the expected move today, just as for example, is is about you know fourteen fifteen dollars at this yeah. point. What's left in the day? So we would go just outside the expected move. So with the current index at, let's call it seventy two. Um, we would probably, you know, go somewhere between the 90 and 95. In this case, I'd go to about the 90. And um, on the downside, you know, you're talking about 72 minus 15, you'd probably go right to the um, almost almost equidistant. So I'm going to say 55 just for the hell of it. They're pr okay. priced about the same, 250 and 215. And okay. that's my short strangle. Now, the problem with this index is this is a very expensive underlying. It's cash settled. Right. But it's a very expensive underlying to trade, right. um, you know, because it's now you're talking about a five thousand dollar index. So right. it's just, you know, eighty five thousand dollars for a one lot. Right. It doesn't make. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, portfolio margin is still forty eight thousand. And for regular, it's it's, you know, probably pretty close to double that. It's just about ninety thousand ish. So that doesn't. Fit so in this case, case, you might go 20. You might do a wide. Iron. I would go. I like going 20 wide. 20 wide, right, right. Yeah, I like going 20 wide. So I'd go 90, 10 here. You could yeah. do 15 if you wanted to. You don't want to waste the extra money. It's fine. Go yeah. 15 wide, and then I go 15 wide here. I'd usually do equidistant. I don't do it based on delta. I just do it based on distance. And then I would, you know, this is this is kind of what, I, what I, where I am here. It's 335 is mid-price. Yeah. I would enter it at mid-price first, leave it in for a few seconds, see if I, oh, I got filled. Oh, you got it. Okay. I was about to change the price, and I just got filled. So, I mean, you're going to get filled in SPX at, you know, usually one tick around mid price. I just got filled at mid price. So, it's, do you like that as a daily or do you? It's been what's your very thoughts effective. On doing a, a daily strategy like that. It's been zero. very effective for the last 11 months because we've been, volatility has been contracting and we haven't gone anywhere. That's so, right. it's been incredibly effective. But I wouldn't, you know, I don't think it's going to stay this good. Yeah. Does it bother? I mean, sometimes when I look at you look at something like this and with the expected move, it's like from a risk manager type thing, you're like, that's gross. You're only getting like 10 points or 15 points, but but they're working. Right. I mean, you, you know, you're oh, not I mean, I think if I got on this particular trade, I mean, literally, if we got one hundred dollars out of this, it would be, <laughs> you know, you're risking. You're collecting 350 you're risking what is it 1150 so you're basically you know if you're just playing the odds um and you try to take 100 bucks out of it you know you're you're looking at about you know an 85 to 90 percent chance of success yeah. but you know but you're risking 10 to make one right 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 yeah i got it i get the odds are you know it's been working so no no that's good that's... for that reason yeah do, so do you just so on something like this you might just try to get a third of the credit or something and run it, get out of there. I might get, take a, I, I might take a third of the credit. I might take, you know, a quarter of the credit. Sure. Okay. 25%, um, 25% is the target. Sometimes I take 10%. Sometimes I'll take 15%. Sometimes I'll take 30%. But, but I'm looking for some number. I mean, I just did this one as a, as a example for, you know, sure. For what we're doing you know for what we're doing right now so there i didn't i, I don't have an, a i don't have a specific agenda um right do you, you like know. the strangle do you like for zero day time do you like the short strangle type trade or wide iron condor versus the butterfly like a third they're, one? they're all the exact same we've, we've yeah. tested the results there's almost no i mean the strangle is obviously a little bit different because you're taking a little more risk yeah you're getting up a lot more capital you should be paid more on the strangle yeah. but i find Personally, I like the SPX because I think it has the tightest markets. And I also think yeah. it has, you know, the cash settled um, in, in case you don't have to deal with anything because it's cash settled. That's right. Um, yeah. You can do SPY. Obviously, you can do ES. You can do MES. You can do XSP. I think XSP and MES are, are too illiquid. I think the SPY and the ES and the SPX are the best. I think SPX works the best because you can do the small size. You can do one lot, well, obviously one or two, and yeah. and um, if you do define risk, it's not you know like this one only used eleven hundred dollars, and right. so yeah. you know hopefully we can grind a few dollars out of it before 
you know, before the end of this session and we'll have a little fun just showing, you know, how, how yeah. it works. But this now, is let me ask you at a zero day, you don't have that much time. Do you mess I will with never any hold a zero day. I will never hold a zero day, Dan, past uh past twelve o'clock. Okay. <laughs> all right. So you don't and you won't adjust it at all or mess I, I will adjust the strangle. I probably won't adjust this iron condor. I got you. Okay. So you just you might put it on in the morning and try to get out by lunch and that's it. Yep. Whether you're up anything or not. Yep. Okay, just because you don't want to get into the... Crazy I don't want to take the risk in the last half of the day, and I don't want to watch it. I usually have stuff going on. Like, I have stuff to do today. Yeah. So I, that's the only reason I didn't do an SPX trade today. But since we're doing this little session with you, I decided, okay, we'll have a little fun with it now and see if we can squeeze a few pennies out of it while we're doing the show. No, thank Do you... Would you say as... You know, you, you've watched the trends in the options, brokerage industry and stuff... Sure. Is this is it still more and more people coming into the business via the zero day stuff? Is that still a hot thing? Well, it's it's a lot of the volume for sure in the in the SPX and in the you know in the spy. Um, I wouldn't say it's a hot thing. I'd say it's been very consistent. Okay. Um, you know, especially it's been a good little. Um, it's a good introduction for some people that don't really right. want to, you know, wait for options to do their thing. <laughs> yeah. Know. Yeah. So well, and you don't have the, the the gap, which is which is a nice thing to, you know, you can deal with it and then get out of it. Yeah, um, I tried the one DT. I didn't like it as much. I like the zeros better. Okay, so you don't mess with like this hasn't with the with the zero day. You haven't played with like one two three day stuff. You just do zero day or nothing. I have played with a lot of the one days. I like the one days better when volatility is higher. So okay. there's a there's an overnight reason to do it. With, sure. With volatility really low, it, it hasn't been as interesting for me. Okay. Makes makes sense. Um any other, I mean, obviously you you like I, I get it with the short strangles. Any other strategy that you uh do you mess around with calendars much or mixed any mixed month stuff? Um I don't do that many straight calendars. I do a lot of diagonals where um, you know, I, I do a lot of what I call directional diagonals, meaning I'll just move the strikes higher or lower, depending on what my directional bent is. So I will do a lot of, on it in here? which one, give me an example and like SPX, how you might just to give an idea what your like a diagonal example. Sure. Sure. So like, I I'll give you, I'll give you one that I did this morning. Oh, okay. Um, okay. 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 <laughs> so a very small trade this morning in the diamonds um this is an example of a directional diagonal that um i did this morning and here i'll show you let's just go to diamonds here's the fills um this is a similar order to what we did this morning so um this morning i bought a this is a directional diagonal um i bought a may um 400 call okay and I sold an April um, 395 call. So instead of doing a straight calendar spread where it's 395, 395 or 400, 400, yeah. I sold a front month 395 yeah. and I bought a back month um, in the case of this in May of um, you know the 400s. We did it for- um, Yeah, Dino it, was saying, you know. Yeah, I did it this morning. Well, it's still about right around the same price. So, so you're a little bit short delta, right? It's a tiny bit of short delta. Yeah, a tiny yeah. bit. Okay, but it gives you a little more, a little more room on the downside. Is that the? Um, it's just you're playing. You're, you know, it, it, you're playing a little bit of a game. I I actually like this approach. I I do it more with equities than I do with um than I do with uh, indexes. Yeah. I prefer it in equities. Like I, I do this a lot in stocks like Tesla, things I think that maybe that are very liquid that maybe overbought or oversold. It's kind of like defined risk with a little bit of directional bent your way. Makes sense. Makes sense. Where's your you know, long just, in this one, Tom? Where's your what? long? Where's your long option in this one? Oh, I'm long the um, May. I'm short the April three ninety five, and I'm long the May four hundred. Oh, I got you. Okay, April three ninety four. Okay. Yeah, so but but I do it more in I do it more in different um, I do it more in different uh, let's call it um, 
you know, individual equities where I have some kind of a, of a, uh, some kind of a directional idea. Let's take a look and find something here that I don't have a position in. Let's say, I'm trying to think of something. Let's say, oh, it's down too much today. Forget that. Um, bum, 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 bum. So you'll mess with some of the minings like Riot or Mara, oh, yeah. CLS. Yeah. yeah. So those aren't. <laughs> Oh, no, these have moved too much today already. Um, let me think about something. I wanted to do something in a stock that's moved around a lot. Here, like a stock like Netflix, I don't have a position on in there hmm. right okay. now. It's got a low IV rank. I have no position on in Netflix. I'm just going to close this up up here. I have no Netflix position on. I'm a little bit bearish in Netflix. Netflix has had what we call a monster run, okay? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I would do. I would consider... Um, a trade like this in Netflix. So just to, I'll give you an idea. So, so in this case, I'm a little bit bearish. And so there's a couple of different ways to approach this, but I would probably go out in Netflix to something like, um, I would probably in April, let's just say sell like a 16 Delta call. Okay. And what do we have here? We have 15 deltas right here. So let's just say I sell 16 delta call. Now, because I'm selling, and, and this is not the best example in the world, but I'll sell, let me move up to here. I'll sell the 700 calls in Netflix. And then I'll go out to May. So you're looking maybe a 15, 20 delta for the shorts? Yeah, and I'm going to go out to May. And I don't want to pay that much for this. I'm collecting 550. So I might go out and buy don't love it, but I might go out and buy the May 720s. Gotcha. Just as an example. And that's 725, 700. Okay. So this spread's going to cost me about $3. It's got a little bit of negative delta to it. You can yeah. see it. Um, actually, this one, I take it back. This one has a little positive delta. I want negative delta. So let me yeah, move you're... this. Let me move this all the way. Actually, I want to make this so it's a fun trade. I'm going to go up to 750, and I'm going to collect a very small credit, and with a little bit of negative delta. You can see my delta right here. So you're at 13 deltas, five contracts. Okay, a little over two two deltas a contract. Yeah, so it's basically nothing, right? Right, right, right. And I'm going to do this for let's call it mid price right here is about a nickel. I'm going to put it a little above the market to see if I get lucky. Okay. Nah, I tried it. It didn't work. Yeah. Um, I because sometimes it, when you go out to May, it's a little bit wide. Yeah. Um, but I want to do it for a small credit. All right. So I got a partial fill right now at three. Would you cent get credit. it at? Would you get it at? Three cent credit. Oh, okay. You did. Okay. Partial fill. Yeah. Um. Nope. I'm still working it. So. Let me ask you, Tom. On this type of a trade, obviously. Yeah. If we go down, you're in good shape. That'll, you know, the little delta will help. If we start going up, do you have any any adjustment or or how do you look at the upside if we're you hey, could you could adjust it by selling a put spread against it. Okay. Um, you know, you could you could adjust it. I wouldn't I, I don't really adjust these that much because they're like I said, they're only two deltas. That's that's right. That's right, right, right. Yeah. So on the upside, you wouldn't like turn it into a camp, you know, take the, turn it into a calendar on the upside to pick up. A I mean, you dollars. could, but I wouldn't. Okay. I get it. just, you just could, but you wouldn't, I, I didn't get, I only got a partial fill on that. That's kind of weird, but so mm -hmm. I only got a two lot, but we'll see what happens. And yeah. we put the trade on and, and, you know, we'll just see. Yeah. So even if you were, even if your timing was off and, and it started going up, you'd let it breathe a little bit. You wouldn't. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Exactly. You can't time something like that. I mean, it's, You're you right. know, it's a hundred hours out of the money. We'll just see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, 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 good. Um, oh, Jim says, what would be maybe a target profit on this thing? Or what are you looking on something like this to make? On that trade? Yeah. Uh, at least it's, it's got a very high probability of profit uh, because the, because remember just selling just selling a 16 Delta call in Netflix is going to have almost an 85 plus percent probability profit. So That's your right. probability profit is going to be so high on that trade. It's going to be 80, it's going to be in the 85% range, 85 to 90. 
So I think you're just looking to to make something a buck, maybe. Okay. I mean, you can make more than that if you hold it a long time, but I think it's a buck ish. Okay. You know, it's a very low risk. It's a low risk, low reward trade. I mean, the you know, you, you can only lose realistically. You know, well, this trade you can lose more because it's pretty wide, but yeah. but it's a low risk, low reward trade just because it's such you're selling such a low delta option. Yeah, high probability. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, good. Oh, Joe says on a large broad market move, how do you manage adjusting so many different positions? If you Joe, have you just get really you get so used to it. Yeah, that's um, what I mean. So like I the think... NVIDIA thing, how was that when when the NVIDIA day that the market went roaring, you know, the biggest move in over a year? Was that like, did you put the fire hat on? Was it like, or were you just used to it? And no, you never get used to that. When oh, NVIDIA you moves, never get used to you never get used to, Joe, you never get used to like a two standard deviation move or a three standard no. deviation move in NVIDIA. No. You never get used to it. Um, <laughs> yeah, that, that was actually a bad day for me. But normally, I mean, all I can say is that adjusting positions becomes almost second nature. And I can adjust, you know, at least 100 positions in, you know, close to, I don't know, 20 minutes tops, okay. 25 minutes tops. And okay. you don't have to adjust all those positions. You're just adjusting a handful. You can go through a few hundred positions in an hour. It, it's not it's not nearly what you think. And if your deltas are relatively flat, there's not that much you have to do. Like the stuff we did today, for example, you don't have to do anything with those positions, just the SPX position. The Shopify position, you know, there's, you know, there's essentially, there's nothing, unless Shopify has a huge move, there's nothing I have to do. And most stocks don't really have, you know, a huge move. Okay. Let's and then see. Jim yeah, had mentioned, huge. I think you met, you talked about that. I think Jim, uh, Tom's putting a lot of like 40, 42 day trades on and maybe staying till the 21 days, right? Because he was- Yeah, yeah. Like this Shopify position we put on is in April. It's got 50 days to go. It has, it has one Delta. You know, there's nothing like here's the crazy thing that we like we put this position on. If I if I set this position, um uh, hold on, let me I'm sorry, I did the wrong. I can do it as a closed position, it'll show. If I put this position down here as a closed position, I just look at what we've done. I mean, essentially, you know, we have almost no delta. You have 17 deltas of a of uh you know a seventy five dollar stock. There's That's not right. a lot of notional risk there. So okay. that kind of stuff doesn't move. The only thing that moves that we have on today and and the and the Netflix trade has, you know, like we said, 12 deltas. So the only thing we have on today that's going to move around at all is going to be the SPX trade from the three different underlines that we did. So there's not that much stuff. You right. Know, you that you got to gotta watch. Here, let's take a look. Here's the SPX trade that we did earlier. Um, we're going to raise it up. I'm just going to show you how, how much this stuff moves around. There, I took it off at 315. Yeah. We sold it at 335, right? Wow. Okay. So quick 20 bucks. Yeah, just like that. Yeah. But I'm just yeah. saying it's just it's just a trade. Like this is how liquid these markets are. Well, and that's that's the key. That did you get filled probably right around the mid there on that one? Um, it's hard to say. You know, I think I yeah. got filled one sure. tick over. Okay. But yeah, it's pretty uh Yeah. And that that's was how fast few, they that's how that fast they move minutes. around. Yeah, that is. Yeah, but I mean, so flat the SPX. I didn't want to leave that on today anyway. The other stuff I'm just going to leave on. Yeah, well, thanks, Tom. Thanks for taking time. I know everybody appreciated it, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks so much, Dan. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. All right.